I'll be honest with you. I'm torn in the direction on how I feel about this this move. Chuck Fletcher just defined what he is. He's a guy who has no sense of the salary cap. He's a guy that doesn't know how to structure contracts correctly. And he sees money. He spends money. He's just so, so happy to pull the trigger. He goes out and then spends a ton of money. That's what he does. He has no sense of the salary cap. That's something I've been saying ever since we hired the man because of his contracts that he had in Minnesota where he signed Suter and Parise to these 13-year, $98 million deals. It was absurd. That's what he does. He just spends money when he sees it. And, and he doesn't realize the effects down the road. And that's what this deal does. He, he doesn't realize what it will do down the road. So from that side of it, yeah, we overpaid for the man. We overpaid for Kevin Hayes. The other side, though, he's still a good player. I know we're paying him a lot of money. He helps this team. He's a good player. He's a good second-line center. He can provide a lot for you. He will help the team all around. And here's another reason why I'm sort of torn on this. Because we've been screaming now, as Flyers fans, who who has been stuck in this weird mode where, what are we? We're middle of the pack. If we make the playoffs, we lose in the first round. If we're not in the playoffs, we just miss. We're in this weird, awkward stage, and we've been screaming, we need to change things, we need to switch things up, we need a new group of guys, we need to add something different to this team. And so far, we have Matt Niskanen, we got Justin Braun, and we end up getting Kevin Hayes. Those are three additions that change the outlook on this team, and I don't think Chuck Fletcher is done yet. So it's weird, it's weird. I see both sides of this, I really do. And I hate playing the middle, but I despise how much money we spend and we overpaid for a man. Someone like William Nylander, who has had two 60-plus point seasons, and he's younger by four years, and he gets 6.92 mil per year for six years, we definitely just overpaid Kevin Hayes. We did. So from that side of it, and down the road when he's in his late 40s, middle late 40s, when he's late 30s, around 34 years old, we're going to say, yeah, it might come back to bite us for that much money. Absolutely. You take a look at the cap we're in now, and there's about $22 million, $23 million left in that cap space, and you're hearing reports that the cap number might be around $82, $83 million. It's not as high as some people thought it would be. But but then then I always think about, Okay, you see the shark sign Eric Carlson for eight years, 11.5. That's a lot of money. And I'm not comparing Eric Carlson's skill level to Kevin Hayes because there's obviously a drop off. But would you want a big contract for a star like that for eight years, 11.5? I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Wait till you see what Panarin's going to get. Wait till you see what Matt Duchesne's going to get. I'm interested to see. I really am. Those two guys are sitting there laughing, saying, thank you, Kevin Hayes. Thank you, Chuck Fletcher. Because I think it just sparked it up a little bit. But you take a look at, at some of these top players in the league, and they're going for, for 11, 12 mil a year. And for eight years, like, I, I don't know if I would want something to that degree. That's a lot of money. And it's hard. It's hard in hockey to build around that. It really is. That's why you take a look at Sidney Crosby and say, wow, when they sign that deal for 8.7, that seems like nothing. Sidney Crosby, (laughs) 8.7? That makes me almost want to throw up thinking about Kevin Hayes getting 7.14. I think he's going to add to this team overall so far through the three moves I've seen so far out of Chuck Fletcher. It defined everything I expected out of this man. No sense of urgency when it comes to the salary cap and numbers, but he's bringing in new faces, he's bringing new, bringing in new guys, and he's changing what this team was. And realistically, as a fan base, it, the same people that are freaking out about the money are the same people freaking out that we needed to change things and we needed to make moves. Personally, I would have liked the six years, 6.2565 type of numbers. That's how I would have loved to see this deal go down. And I think maybe Chuck Fletcher realizing that if he didn't sign Kevin Hayes to a specific date at a specific time, then he would have the freedom to go around and and look at some other options. So uh, I think Chuck Fletcher realized, okay, I'm just going to wow him, blow him away to something he can't say no to. And that's essentially what he did. He overpaid for the man. 55 points last season. It was the greatest. 
greatest of his career. He plays and flirts around that 20 goal per year number. He gets like 17, 19 in, in that area. He had 25 at one point in his career. That's what he's going to give you. And I'm curious to see how this all works out because if Claude Giroux moves back to center, and we don't know where Elaine Vigneault was going to place him in the lineup. He did a great job at left wing. But if you put him at center on the top line and you put Sean Couturier on the second line at center and then you have Hayes at the third line, like the depth is insane and then you still have Nolan Patrick or you keep Giroux on the left side with Sean Couturier, Kevin Hayes as your second center, Nolan Patrick as your third because you're going to put Nolan Patrick on your fourth but if you are, if he's your fourth line then you can just roll lines and your players have so much more energy. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out without a doubt. So my thought process on it is you add a player who's going to help your squad. He's 27 years old. You have him signed through 34. So you have a good chunk of his career. He's a nice player. He adds to your team. He's smart. He's strong. He's physical. He plays a good game. But you overpay for him. You overpay for him. I mean, that's what you do in free agency at the end of the day. You overpay for people. That's the beauty when you're a player and you're in free agency. Teams are going to throw a lot of money at you. But I think we leaned, you know, we, we definitely leaned a little too too much on the hefty side and and that's what Chuck Fletcher does that's something you need to realize when he's in your front office he does that he has the track record of doing it so where do you see this are you, are you happy that we're mixing things up and we're changing things around and we're adding different players and we're getting new faces or are you just pissed off that we're, we're spending all this money and and we're gonna maybe be in cap hell at one point it's 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 you know it, it is what it is you you take one side and the other side it's a cause and effect Grab new players. But listen, I, I, this is where I think trades are still going to be in play. Whether it's Ghost, whether it's other people. I think trades are in play, which will open up more of the cap space that we have right now. I, I don't think Chuck Fletcher is done. I believe he is still on the prowl. He is still looking at what he can add to this team and what he can take away from this team in, in cap space situations. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. So there, there it is. And... It's just an odd feeling right now. It's an odd feeling because I know that this contract can come back to bite us. But I also know we're looking at some new faces. It's funny. The first video I made, I stated the move for Matt Niskanen, it didn't make much sense based off the salary and the 5.75 and Radko Gudis' 30. It just didn't make much sense at all. And at the very end of the video, I said, but if we make more moves and add more veteran players to the D-line as a whole, to the d core as a whole, maybe I'll think differently. We add Justin Braun. He's only one year, 3.8 mil. I like that move. And the two defensemen together, it's okay. It's easier for me to swallow. And now we go out and spend $50 million on Kevin Hayes. And it just, it just, it scares me for what this guy, you know, for what this guy does. It just, it just scares me moving forward, knowing what this guy does. His mind process is flawed when it comes to spending money. You see money, you spend money. But that's not necessarily how it's supposed to go. You have to think forward. You have to think moving forward. But at the same time, you're getting a valuable player. Someone who will help this team. Someone who can play alongside Travis Konechny, JVR. I'm just spitballing, throwing out names there. Someone who can play a, play with some of these guys. Top six forwards and, and can have a good year, a good two years, good three years, good four years, hopefully seven years. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this down below. I know that there are people who are disgusted with it. I know that there are some people saying, listen, this is this is it, man. This is what you do. This is how you approach free agency this year. This is what NHL hockey is nowadays. Take a look around the league. Yes, maybe he got overpaid specifically, but all around, money is being thrown around. You're seeing guys get paid 11, 12 mil a year for seven, eight years. And then those teams, they're put in tough cap situations. But that's what you do. But the question is, is Kevin Hayes that worth it? Is Kevin Hayes worth it to that degree to put yourself in a situation because of his contract? If you do it with Eric Carlson, if you do it with John Tavares, if you do it with Austin Matthews, is that different than when doing it with Kevin Hayes? It's interesting. 
I'm torn, and I'm and and I'm I'm playing the middle of the field right now. I hate doing that. I'd like to have a side, but right now at this very moment, when I just find out about the news, I'm 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 sort of right in the middle. I'm sort of right in the middle. So, I want to hear everyone's comments down below. I I know it's going to be a a fun and interesting time to to see what some people think about uh, Chuck Fletcher, if you will. But I I pretty much know where it's going. Let's be honest. Thank you for watching. See you next time.